bell except every two hours for them to come take care of me. Well, I'm a 50-year-old nurse, and you would never, ever, ever, ever say that. Mm -hmm. So I asked to speak to her director. Pretty natural. Um, I was actually in the leadership role. So I had no problem speaking to this manager about the young nurses and how we have to work with them on compassion and understanding that patients don't work on a clock. Right, yeah. You know, they work based on what their needs are and how well they've been met or not met. Anyway, this young lady came in while I was still talking with the boss, and um, I started talking with her and having counseled for years. Um, after she left, her manager said, oh my gosh, what you said to her was just perfect for the situation. And I thought, honey, we're taught those things. Mm. We just have to bring them forward. You know, God's yeah. got all that stuff in us. Yeah. And I don't know how I brought it forward, because I was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. But he did. Yeah. And I hope it's made a difference in her life. And many others. Yeah, absolutely. She must have been the same one. Well, I was in the hospital with rheumatic fever for 10 days when I was between 4th and 5th or 5th and 6th. I can't remember now. But, um, and they brought a friend of mine in who had had a bike accident. He'd gone over top and he mm. hurt his spleen. He needed to have a spleen out. Well, the first night after he had surgery, he was throwing up mm. every 10 minutes. And, of course, he couldn't reach the bell. He was, in, I mean, retching, and so I would ring the bell. Well, she came in and took my bell away. Okay. I said, so then when he started doing it, I, there's nothing I could do. Wow. I mean, I was, same thing. Well, I was being helpful, you know. <laughs> Next time, call me. <laughs> That's Carol's God put. <laughs> Uh, so we have some some good responses there. Some of the ones uh, according to uh, to the first Corinthians and the second Corinthians passages there. So we'll give an account of uh, I would say the foundation, what we build our lives on and around, which would be Christ. Uh, if you've built on anything else besides Christ, you'll give an account to what you built your life on and around. And then basically all the other responses that we had are, according to the Second Corinthians, whatever we do in our bodies here. Whatever we do in our bodies here, we'll have to give an account for it. And so, that's not to say we know that we're saved, right? We know that we're saved because of Christ's work for us and not because of anything we've done. And we have faith in that, we believe the promise. But Scripture still in many places does say that... that there will be an account of your of your works and the life that you lived on the last day. You don't have to fear being condemned because of Christ, but that is still a thing. And so um, we affirm both of those things. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then for B, why should the accounting? Wow. Why should the accountant accounting not frighten the believer? I answered that for you. <laughs> Saved by grace, not by works. <laughs> That's right. Christ's account of perfection and righteousness has been credited to us as a gift. The danger of like preparing uh, the study and all of those things is is forgetting that like the reason my mind was there is because it's here and I skipped ahead and, <laughs> and gave the whole answer because you know mm -hmm. anyway. Anything else on day one before we move to day two? All right, Romans 14, verses 13 to 18. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus Christ that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So number five, answer the following questions based on verses 13 to 16. 
Uh, 5a, what is risked in doing something another believer, uh, another believes is wrong, even if we're convinced it's right? It causes a loss to our neighbor. Right? Causes harm and a loss to our neighbor. Piles up on their conscience, which is the opposite of, like, what Martin Luther was trying to do in the Reformation and the principles by which we live by those Reformation principles, not piling up on people's consciences. Any other things for A there? I'm saying it can cause both of you to falter. Oh, uh, yeah? Could cause both of you to falter because now if you're insisting that you're right, uh, you are no longer walking in love towards your neighbor. Now you've set yourself up, right, in the place of authority um, instead of instead of walking in love towards your neighbor, which is the very directive that we've been talking about uh, here. And now there's conflict instead of sharing the burden with each other. Any others? So it kind of goes along with that uh, contributing to the loss of your neighbor, but that it breeds uh, doubt and confusion. Uh, it breeds doubt and confusion in their uh, heart and mind as well. B, what motivation will prevent us from distressing a fellow Christian by what we do? Acting in love. Acting in love. Yep, love will motivate us to avoid distressing a fellow Christian by what we do. Because love always seeks the highest good of another not the highest good of the self. Uh, C, try to capture the challenging principle Paul presents in verses 13 to 16 by composing a slogan. For example, if it hurts someone's faith, don't do it. You took the best one. What's <laughs> <laughs> not a slogan, but when I was teaching school, it was always, does a person see Jesus in you? We are mirrors. Okay. Yeah. Does a person see Jesus when they see you? Uh, so the slogan, that, this slogan, uh, the verse that would go along with that, uh, I guess you could call it a slogan, but you can make it a slogan, but uh, they will know us, that they will know we are Christians by our love. Um, and I think that really goes along with what you said, Nancy. I got thrown back to the 60s when there were so many freedom songs, and it made me think of the one where freedom isn't free, someone must pay the price. So freedom isn't free, God has paid the price. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah, freedom isn't free, God or Christ paid the price. Any others? Sue Kreitzer was out of surgery and back home recovering now. So. Who? Who? Sue Kreitzer fell and broke both wrists last Thursday. Oh, yeah, so she, I had texted Ken this morning. And mm. She's tired of that. I guess this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's learning how to put on makeup. Because <laughs> she can't use you. Oh my god. That would be the worst, the least of my concern. Uh, it would be mine too, but I'm, <laughs> I don't too. wear it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I just wrote three words. I'm I'm so bad at being creative and coming up with these things. I just wrote do no harm. Takes the back yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> would you say do I just wrote do no harm. Which I'm pretty sure is probably a slogan for something that someone else has came, come up with because I, I, I'm trying to think. I've heard it so many times, but that's what I wrote. Take what other people write. Yeah, that's right. Um, six. Think about yourself for a moment. What makes the principle Paul expresses in verse thirteen to sixteen so difficult to follow? I think I can change others. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, the power to change others. Okay. I looked at it a different way. It's hard to know sometimes what might offend someone, even though I would okay. not be offended by it. Right. So I'm not offended by it. It's hard to know other people might be uncertain, certain, certain things. And, and it's like so, if you're in a you know different community, like you go uh, overseas, go to another country, yeah. um, you know, making sure to learn. Okay, what is really customary not and what isn't? Okay. Yeah. 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 That. <laughs> That's such a, anytime I think about, like, it would be so cool to go over there and, like, make sure you know yeah. how to interact with these people, uh, how to be polite and according to their customs of what is, like, you just totally dishonored this person, disrespected, totally yeah. tramped all over their customs. When, when, Scary. When, when Black and Meat started doing work overseas, and I was in that group in the early, it started in the early 90s, um, they actually gave us an eight hour class. <laughs> in the morning it was, you know, just talking about customs in the various places we were working, and then the other, the, the last part of it, we actually went, and it was how to dine like a diplomat, and it was going, going, and they fed you, they had a lady who was saying, well, you, you can't eat like that. You have to eat like this mm -hmm. like, when you're over there. It's like, wow. I mean, it was like trying to absorb it all. And unfortunately, I was only going to one place where so you could focus at the time. Mm -hmm. You could focus on it. But it, you know, you, it, with habit, it comes. And it's, you know, you talk about it among you know, people that go over about. Well, it's something you'd have to be so, so, uh, intentionally focused on because I think like this question brings about like like you said not knowing what's going to uh, offend someone that doesn't offend you especially in context of going overseas is that we can just go totally on autopilot yeah. and just do what we always do One thing and is all of a sudden it's you don't totally offend plate. someone right. don't clean your plate right. right they're offended that you didn't get enough to eat they right. think if you clean your plate, they offended you by not. Yeah, and, and, and another uh, kind of one of those things. I feel pretty comfortable uh, here. It's probably still a little bit uh, unpolite, impolite here as well. But I feel pretty comfortable if I go over to someone's house and I have food of, of, of being honest about like, uh, not eating everything that's provided. Like if I don't like, I don't like a lot of vegetables. Uh, You're I like specific. I like specific vegetables. Uh, I feel fairly comfortable being honest about that here. But in other places, if you do not eat yeah. what you've been given, uh, and it was kind of like that in my own family growing up too. But uh, but in other places, it's just it's probably impolite here. But in other places, it's like egregious. Right. I can remember once where uh, a, a woman who's very important to me. Mm -hmm. She's way up there in the respect area. Served Chinese chicken salad. I'm one of those people where cilantro tastes like soap. Oh. I can't eat it. I felt so bad, but I couldn't pretend. I couldn't eat it. Yeah. It was just I would I would bop it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, well, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of yeah, hard to hide a gag reflex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and it, and it, you know it just you're like, what do you do? <laughs> you know, yeah. if it hadn't been someone I could say, I am really because that was the first time I had actually had cilantro. I didn't uh -huh. know. I would oh not have yeah. To tell her yeah. that I didn't like it. Kimchi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, that's, that is hard. <laughs> yeah, was, you know, just trying, you know, you want to be polite, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, that's why I think here, I think it's safe here for the most part in our own country to be honest about those things before. Like, I've, I've had those instances too where I know beforehand that I don't like something and I still try to like be polite and it's like I can't help my my reaction to this it's like I feel so so I've just been like after a while I was like I'm just gonna be honest with people and say I don't 
I don't need that. You know, it would be nice when people invite someone for dinner to say, is there anything that you absolutely cannot invite right. me to? Right. And, I mean, it's as simple, yep. all you're doing is respecting them. Plus, who wants to spend all afternoon in the kitchen prepping stuff and then, that nobody's going to eat? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I raised two boys. I know about fussy food um, in ways to make it palatable if people are willing to try. Yeah. I mean, she uh, the general principle that makes the general principle that makes this so difficult for everyone is that that it that we are by nature self-centered and just worried about our Selfish. wants, desires, things like that, and that's, it's not surprising, that, it, it, it's obviously a, a sin to be self-centered, but it's like, is it really surprising that our nature is to take care of ourselves first? That's just the way it is, and so you really have to just be intentional to step outside of yourself, to pay attention to those things, to pay attention to those around you. Uh, 7a, verses 17 to 18 present important truths concerning the kingdom of God. According to verse 17, what is the kingdom of God not about? Eating and drinking. <laughs> Eating and drinking. Trivial uh, stuff. Trivial stuff, right. I think eating and drinking here, because Paul is especially uh, addressing like food laws, because there's a mixture of Jewish Christians and, and Gentile Christians, uh, but it could be shorthand for, uh, you know, uh, the kingdom of God is not about like self-fulfillment. Um, but I do think he specifically here addresses especially eating and drinking because of the Jewish-Gentile split, or mix, mix, I should say, in that congregation. And for that matter, uh, it's not about uh, something that came about in like the Middle Ages. It's not about self-chastisement either. Uh, uh, you know, self-inflicting wounds to discipline your body against the temptations of the flesh, right? Like. Uh, Martin Luther would whip himself on the back uh, and stuff like that. So it's not about the opposite of self-fulfillment either, of like basically pounding yourself into the dust uh, because you think that that, you know, earns merit or whatever it is, which was a big thing at that time. Uh, B, according to verse 17, what is the kingdom of God about? And righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit and the gospel. That's exactly right. Righteousness, uh, the righteousness of Christ that is ours in faith, and that righteousness of a sanctified life prompted by the Spirit. Peace in the Bible, a wholeness and fullness of relationship with God, with self, with creation, and with others. Uh, this overall general harmony with creation and with God. And three, joy, joy in the Lord, a happiness not based on circumstances, but on the Lord who is God and what God does. Um, C, those who concern themselves with the important matters of the kingdom of God will experience two things according to verse 18. What are those two things? It pleases God and receives human approval. Right. Doesn't that seem like kind of rare? Like... We always think about this in terms of, like, uh, if you're receiving acceptance from God, like, there's no way you could receive, like, the approval of men. Uh, but Paul says otherwise here. You can uh, be acceptable to God and uh, approved by men. I think that's that people are going to notice if you're looking outside of yourself and caring about others because you're caring about them, and that matters to them, right? So you can you can be acceptable to God and approved by men. Not always. That might not uh, last very long or whatever, but not in every circumstance. Not in every circumstance, right? All right. Anything else here before day three? All right. Verses nineteen to twenty-three. So then, let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. 
Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. All right. In verse 19, Paul suggests that we pursue activities that will bring peace to the church and that will build it up spiritually. What are some practical ways by which church members might follow Paul's counsel in this verse? I came up with a blank on this. Really? <laughs> I kind of did too, but I, I, what I wrote was avoid being judgmental when someone believes something that doesn't matter spiritually. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, when, when someone has a difference of opinion that, that makes no difference in their life of faith. It's not harmful to their faith or their... Uh, their place under God's grace. Things that will bring uh, peace to the church and that will build it up spiritually. I think uh, opportunities for hospitality to be shown, um, whether it's in the church or if it's a church member uh, who, you know, who's outgoing and likes to entertain, to invite Christ fellow Christians or visitors to the church, invite them uh, to your house that might be a little less popular now after like COVID and things like that, but still, uh, if, if that's something people are comfortable with, meeting together is, is uh, a good thing, whether that's done in the church or elsewhere, so hosp acts of hospitality. Um, we talked about this in a class last before the new year of, of, uh, of not being more focused maybe on someone's posture or what they're wearing in church as we worship together, but focusing your attention on, on um, what we're doing together as, as confessing uh, the faith and singing praises to God and things of that nature. One of the things that seems to have, maybe it hasn't gone away, I just haven't seen it, but that's co-oping for child care or different things like that. Now we probably have to include elder care. But if you co-op and trade with people, there's no cost to anybody. You each understand what you know, the other's difficulties are, and it just saves and allows people to get out and do things. I mean, we did that when we had little kids. Right. And then when Gary's parents got sick and lived with us, you know, there was a neighbor who was right there for him if we were wrong. So and those, I just don't see those things happening. And I said, maybe they do, and I'm just it's not in that circle. Where my sister lives, that's really, the bartering is very, I mean, in, in good and bad, you know, it kind of makes it hard for her. Sure I was looking down um, towards. Okay, it's good. It looks like it was almost <laughs> tilting towards the ground. It does. <laughs> it makes it hard sometimes because, you know, it's just, well, instead of paying you money, I'll, I'll do this service for you. It's a little more difficult, but um, I like, yeah. Yeah, bartering yeah. services, you know, I'm thinking of just that, I don't want to call it simple, because it's not simple to watch a child who has lots of physical demands or something. But that is important, and mm. it's more a sense of giving when you're co-oping. And, you know, some of us went down with hours, and some people went down with extra hours. So. Yeah. It just, it just, even elder care today, if we think about that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's mm. see. Mm. Any other ideas for 8A? All right, 8B. Uh, sharing optional, so if you want to share, I'll give you a couple seconds to respond. As you contemplate your own role in the life of the church, how are you, or might you, be building the unity of your church? Watching words that that for everyone, James, like James, James chapter three, uh, the tongue can spark. Uh, the analogy he uses is the tongue can start spark a wildfire, uh, an unquenchable fire. Um, 
Yeah, the words. Others? Well, well, we talked about this a little bit in, in uh, LV because of what had happened with some people, but, you know, ignoring visitors is not the way to go. You need mm -hmm. to greet visitors just like you do members, and, and uh, I, I don't know if it's doing any good, but I, I text all of, anybody's got a cell phone, but I can figure out a cell phone number, their birthday and anniversary that appears in the go. I, mean, right. I, I send those. Well, I, I don't know I what that's yeah. doing, but I get a lot of appreciate the well yep. wishes uh -huh. and you know, that kind of stuff. And it's not to make me feel better, but I think it, some of the people, especially if they're new and I do it, wow. Well, it's, it's things is, like this. It's, it's, it's uh, little details where you know that someone is paying attention. Yeah. Right, that you know that someone is paying attention and is 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 doing something like that. Uh, they seem maybe like a small thing, but they're really not. They, they, those things can that can make a big. Well, I started doing that after I retired because I didn't. Mm -hmm. I did not think about it because I was too focused on working. Right. Right. Work. Yeah. But that's the thing. That's the thing is someone knows that your focus was on them for a moment. That that you took the time to uh, recognize their birthday. Do we still uh, have the ambassador? Yes, uh, it's getting. Uh, we, we do have them. ambassadors. It's it's Sorry, picking up. Because yeah. I, I mean, I know that's why I started going here. It's well, great call on us. Because um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> a long, long time ago. Well, yeah. Ago. yeah. <laughs> I remember what one, one of the couples that came, but it, it was, was like coffee, two uh, different uh, times. Uh, Ambassadors uh, came uh, to my uh, house. Oh wow! Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I mean, and I'm brand new to the area, living with my aunt. You know, it, it have, <laughs> that had never happened to me before. Uh-huh. But it, it made a difference. Absolutely. It started coming here in 1999. I was going to say, Bill and Donna Reed were pretty new. Right? The day we joined, and they um, invited the us to their, their, uh, at least back at this time, um, they would uh, take a Christ. list of, of the visitors, study that night, and they would go visit them. Afterwards, we answer any questions that they have. I think, Donna, and when I did you all start coming here? Tom and Ruth, Ruth that one there. Was yeah, it before right. or after COVID? During. During. Yeah, and so I think it got squashed by COVID. Yeah, it got squashed by COVID. A lot of things have been moved around. Yeah. Even the Ruth Center. Yeah, it's been moved around. Yeah, and it's been moved around. Yeah, it's been moved around. Yeah, and it's been moved around. Yeah, and it's been moved around. Yeah, and Things are getting uh, reorganized, as far as my understanding. Those things are kind of getting reorganized. Well, and, then, and then the difficulty is, when those things get back, are people going to be as interested in doing those things as before? Because because mindsets have, have changed just in terms yeah, of I mean, they showed interaction. Right next. I mean, they just yeah. 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 It just shows you're welcome and they're interested in you. We can't right. know if nobody cares whether they come here or not. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. yeah. They're saying that people are just searching out opportunities for this socialization. Yeah. Because they haven't had it. Yeah. So if they're coming here searching for socialization and they don't get it, then I'm probably one of the worst to remember because I can't remember names and faces and put it all together. I, I actually finally gave up on it after I quit work and I, yeah, I wasn't dependent on it anymore. But, you know, uh, so, so you just say good morning to everybody with a smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we're not. You know, it's just... That's why I like when people wear names. I know. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. It's so important. Yeah. Even the visitors, we add, you know, fill mm -hmm. fill get one. A lot of times they don't, they don't do that. And it's, Pastor uh, Adam's got a new thing that he started. Is that he takes a photo and types their name on it. <clears throat> so he, and then he can kind of review them. And, Okay. That's good. Yeah. Study. That's good. Yeah. Because you need so many people coming out of church. Well, mm -hmm. if you got the picture and the names, and you can go home, quiet time, mm -hmm. prayer time, or whatever, then just go through that. <laughs> That's kind of a different yeah. way. Of <laughs> I, 
I think when, when I came here, one of the things that is, uh, was kind of just important for me is just once a conversation, uh, I forced myself, don't just say hello, say, hello, Pam, hello, Carol, yeah. hello, like, when you greet, don't say hello, say their name, and I did that for weeks, and I think that was part of the reason why I was able to really learn people's names, uh, as, as, I guess, as quickly as I did. And then other, the other part of that is people help me by wearing their name tags. Yeah. Uh, well, that's then, what we emphasize that yeah. we need to do that. Yeah. And the new vicar's It truly history. helps. It yeah. truly, well, you truly know, helps. You, you would be surprised. I mean, I, I like to say the name when I serve communion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you wouldn't believe how many times I know who the person is and I get a brain cramp up there oh, because I'm see. going through so many people. <laughs> And I know this person's yep. name, and then, so, you know, the, Hi. Yeah. the out is just saying, take drink, instead of their name, but, uh, but sometimes I Sometimes I'll say it slightly under my breath in case yeah. I get it wrong. I'm like 98% <laughs> sure. Well, then so you got the, the, Michelle and Peyton Arnie, who look so much alike, and they're right next to each other, you can't tell which well, one I think is. I think, I think, I think. I think the reason I know, I didn't actually, I knew Peyton, I think she typically wears her name tag, but she's also with Jeremiah. Jeremiah's right. always, yeah, the, no. so no, Jeremiah, can do that. that's been helped. That's, like how, that. I, that's <laughs> how I remember now, too. Uh, who, who people are with, uh, so yeah, anything, I, I also try to like uh, associate people's names with, where did I meet you? I met you at an elders meeting, I met you as you came to my house and helped me unload, I met you here, and so name and place too really helped put all those things together um there are a lot of and remembering names takes some serious oh, wow. uh some serious exactly. work what i hate is when you think you remember the name and then a couple weeks go by and see a person and you see them again yeah <laughs> Yep. <gasps> or they look like someone else, and you're like, either your name is this or this, and I'm not confident which one it is. Yeah, well, so pastor's got the directory good tool, Leah, because sometimes I, yeah. I find myself sitting at home, kind of going through the directory, looking at names and faces, and... You know, I, I, I do that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Once they get in the directory, I... Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> or they don't have their picture. That's yes. One of the things that I I've said out is like if I don't know if if Vicar doesn't know your name by now, it's more than likely because your picture is not in the directory. Mm -hmm. uh, and that there are people that I'm very familiar with. They're here every single week. Uh, and if they're if it's a double whammy of not having a picture in the directory or not wearing their name tag. Yeah. Don't know. Don't feel alone. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to look around on a Sunday morning, and if I see somebody new, I yeah. go over right afterwards, and I might have to do that two or three weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll say, hello, how are you? What's your name again? But I like to in, uh, introduce myself. I wear a name tag and introduce myself, yeah. just in yeah. case nobody else has ever said anything to them, because that's a big no-no. Pastors, pastors' emphasis on those points are really uh, good. Good emphasis. All right. Number nine, read verse 20. Give a contemporary example of how someone might cause a fellow Christian to stumble by insisting on his or her own way in a matter in which we are personally free, but by which a weaker Christian might be misled or offended. Uh, we are on number nine. Sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Well, we were talking about this, but because you don't say hello to people, they might be kind of ignored or mm -hmm. welcomed. Or, mm -hmm. my, my biggest problem is that it gets noisy in the narthex, mm -hmm. and I don't want to shout. I'm not used to shout. I've been told you have a loud voice to be quiet, so that kind of. But people that you know just walk past you and you said good morning and they just walk past you because they didn't hear you or were intentionally not keeping that ear open for people. Right. And I think it, it, with that point too, uh, uh, if you see whether you see them in the narthex or, or in the sanctuary too, and if you know them or if you recognize them, maybe you met them and they were a visitor last week, 
even smiling and waving across the aisle, uh, acknowledging them, uh, can go a long way as well. Especially if, because uh, I know for me too, like the, the the noise level can get really high, uh, and so so I. Uh, kind of will do that, a, a quick kind of acknowledge people, smile at them and wave, and uh, I, I think, uh, I feel good when people mm -hmm. do that, even if it's not kind of going on out of their way to talk to me, that it's just I see that you're here, and I'm glad that you're here. Yeah. But 20 is talking specifically about food. Yeah. So, you know, I... I Everything is indeed clean. I'm thinking, you know, if you, you know that someone doesn't eat meat during this period of time, doesn't do this during this period of time, just be respectful of that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and having a, a, a dinner party and on Friday in the middle of Lent, you know, might want to serve something other than barbecue. Yeah. Yep, yep. Just, you know, being aware of what, you know, what the people that are in there. Yeah, Latasha's uh, sister is, is I will say, mostly a vegetarian. Um, she will eat meat if she knows the source and that, you know, uh, she, she does not really uh, eat meat if it's from, like, a massive meat processing plant or, or things like that, but if she knows that it comes from a reputable farm or, or something like that, she'll eat it. Um, but otherwise she doesn't eat meat. And I think that for, for me, I struggle, I'm kind of picky, uh, but it would be a really great thing, and I've thought about it every time she comes to visit, that I don't, I shouldn't have to have a separate meal for myself with meat. Uh, I think it would be really a show of hospitality if I showed that I could have the same meal uh, with someone while accommodating their their needs and sharing in the same food and setting aside my desire to have like meat at every single meal <laughs> with uh, with I, that act of hospitality.